Well, hi everybody. So today I'll be going over Wing 42's Boeing 247D. Um, this is a, probably going to be kind of a long one, or uh, at least long for the length of videos that I don't really make. So uh, we'll kind of just go ahead and, and get started here, so at least it won't be uh, too long. Alright, well here we are in the uh, 247. Uh, it looks pretty good. That's pretty much all I'm going to say about this thing. Um, it's a pretty detailed plane, and it's going to take a while to kind of run through the uh, the sort of features, the instrument panel, and actually get it started here. So, um, in the interest of time, I'm just going. To, that's all I'm really going to say. So we'll go ahead and, and run through the features, and then uh, eventually get it started. Alrighty, well, I'm going to start with the things you can kind of open up here in, in the, the cockpit here. Uh, so the first thing is you can open the the co-pilot and the pilot's window. Uh, then we can open the roof up here by kind of pulling these uh, two pins out. And we can crack open the roof. That seems to be about as high as it opens up to. I haven't figured out if uh, not locking this thing back down causes it to uh, crash the plane or not. It's not something I tested. Um, we can open the uh, door up here to the passengers and have a look back here. Uh, you can open up the John if you want. Um, you can't really see anything from in here, but it is actually modeled, so it's kind of got that going for it. Um, and that's pretty much it for what you can open, and I'll uh, run through the clipboard here because that's where most of the other features for this plane are. Alrighty, well, we'll bring up the clipboard here just by kind of clicking up here. Uh, it's basically a cover sheet for it, and then uh, performance and limitations, so, uh, you know, speeds and all the rest of that stuff. The second page, and then we have uh, payload weight and balance. Uh, so this is where you're going to add your fuel. Um, apparently right now there isn't fuel in here. Um, and then, you know, the oil levels, uh, this is where you can add the passengers. So you click on this, and each one of these seats will put a little red person here until you actually click on make it so and then it'll take some time to actually add in the passenger so the same thing goes you put some baggage in here and uh, let's put some weight up here in the nose uh, now the as far as this section goes uh, you have things like uh, passenger stairs doors um, the other things on here that do open up and um, the ladders for the engine and chocks and everything like that so uh, we're gonna go ahead and Move the chocks. Uh, anytime you do anything in this plane, it's going to have a little sort of tab pop up over here, and it does take it time to do things. So, uh, for instance, we'll go ahead and load the passengers up here, and this will take a few seconds. So, uh, what's going to happen is this is going to pop up, and uh, they're going to start loading passengers, and it'll give you a percentage before completion, and then. Uh, it's going to open the doors up, it's going to put little baggage carts out there full of, full of baggage, and then they're going to fill everything up. And That is pretty much what's going to happen here, so we're going to skip this while they do that. Uh, this is the startup page. This is pretty much where you're going to actually start the plane up from. Is here, and I'll cover that when we actually do start the thing up. You have a couple other things in here. Uh, you can open up the battery compartment if you want to and see that. Um, if you want to not fly this thing with damage. This thing actually does have a pretty detailed damage model on it. Uh, you'll need to uncheck all of these. Uh, now, by default, I'm pretty sure they're already checked. So if they are checked, it means damage is on. If they aren't are unchecked, it means damage is off. Then you can go ahead and uh, we can remove all of the the cowlings and everything here for the engine. And it exposes the engine, and it does look pretty good. It is modeled, and uh, it's quite nice looking. We'll open the window up here. Make that a little bit better. So uh, that's what the engine looks like. We can go ahead and put all this back on. And it'll put everything back in place. Alrighty. On to the next page. This is the oil page. Uh... You are going to need to add oil to this thing. It does burn up oil pretty quickly. Uh, I tend to fly it with the uh, 50 weight here. 
and it seems to last the longest in terms of how, how quickly it burns everything up. Uh, when I flew it around with the 30 weight on it, I think I got like an hour an hour out of it. It maybe had uh, maybe it drained like maybe it burned like 75% of the oil up. So, uh, I, but that was pretty much the first flood I ever did in this thing. So who knows? I might have been doing something wrong. Um, but you will need to uh, either top off the oil or change the oil. So you'll click on change oil, and this is where you can select different weights, and then click OK. And your little ground crew guy will go out here and fill up the oil. Um, as we go ahead and top it off, I guess it's already full. Normally this door will open up and uh, they'll put a little oil pan down here and I'm going to have to, I forgot to cover up the engine here. Uh, but that's basically how that works, so you will need to uh, watch your oil with this one. And then we've got the uh, radio equipment page here. And then the last page is uh, credits and everything. So that's kind of a, a brief explanation of most of the features on this plane. Um, and it will put the covers back on there. All right, there we go. See, now the door is open and uh, they'll add oil to it. So uh, things to, like the features on this plane, they do take a minute to actually take place. Uh, everything is kind of measured out in a weird time frame. So um, just keep that in mind. And that'll pretty much do it for the clipboard. So uh, we'll go ahead and run through the instrument panel here. Alrighty, well, we'll go ahead and run through the instrument panel here real quick. Uh, some of this might not be completely obvious, or I wouldn't say it's complicated. It, it, once you kind of understand what, what it, how it works, it's, it's not that difficult. So if I run into anything that needs an explanation, I, I will go ahead and explain it. Uh, but starting up here on the left, we've got the uh, landing gear indicator, your outside air temperature, and then we have the engine temperature gauge. Now, the engine temperature gauge is a, is pretty much controlled by this knob over here. And uh, you have a couple of different engine temperature gauges, I guess, that you can access. So you're going to flip this between these three settings over here for the left engine, and then you'll flip it all the way over here for the three settings for the right engine. Now, it's a little difficult to see, but the first selection is going to be a 1, the second selection is a 4, and the third selection is a C. Uh, 1 and 4 are the uh, gauges for cylinders, uh, the cylinder head temperature for... Uh, cylinders one and four and the C is for uh, carburetor air temperature and then moving down here to the uh, fuel gauges we've got uh, the left gauge here is for the left wing tank and the right gauge over here is for the two right wing tanks so to read this you'll need to pull this plunger and it'll bounce the needle up here kind of wherever it sit, starts to sit still is, is what your fuel level is about 70 gallons in the left tank and then uh, to read the in, the main tank and the auxiliary tank that are located on the right in the right wing you'll need to use this switch here to flip between the two of them and then we'll just pull the plunger again and it'll it'll give a readout for uh, whichever tank you selected then we'll move over here to the center and we've got a directional gyro attitude indicator airspeed indicator uh, the altimeter here turn slip coordinator climb indicator uh, a clock and then we have a manifold pressure gauge now this, uh, you have one single gauge again for uh, both engines, so to get a readout for that you'll need to come over here to this switch kind of up in the far left, upper left corner of the instrument panel and you'll need to flip between uh, right and left. And it'll read uh, whatever the manifold pressure is for the selected engine. We'll move over here to the, the far right. We've got uh, fuel pressure gauges for the left and the right engine, uh, oil pressure gauges, uh, oil temperature gauge, and then we have the RPM gauges down here. Uh, these switches here are primarily uh, lighting, cockpit lighting and whatnot, uh, nav lighting, stuff like that. Um, then we have uh, some more lighting switches down here, uh, like dome lights and whatnot. And then we have a fire extinguisher up here. Now, I, I haven't tested this. I haven't lit the engines on fire or anything like that. Most of the things in this plane actually do work, so it wouldn't actually surprise me if that actually does function. Uh, and then we have the 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 prop feathering buttons. I'm having trouble. I've been having trouble saying that. So um, we'll move down here to the co-pilot side of the cockpit here, and we've got a fuse box. 
So we will unlock this and open it up and you can remove all the fuses in here if you need to. Uh, they do work, so um, you know, if you need to cut something or a fuse burns out, I'm not sure if that actually happens to this plane, but if it does, this is where you're going to change it. We have uh, the manual gear lever, so for whatever reason your gear aren't uh, retracting, you'll use that instead. Um, then we'll come over here to the I guess the center console here. We've got another fuse box. This one is for your radio. Uh, again, we'll just open this up and there's uh, fuses in there. Then we've got uh, the icing switch, uh, engine distributor dial, and then we've got these three knobs here are for mostly for interior lighting for instrument panels and whatnot. And then we've got the master ignition switch, uh, the left and the right engine magneto switches, and then we have landing light switches and uh, the fuel tank selector here. We've got the elevator trim here. And then these three switches are called crystal switches or something like that. They're, I, I don't know what they are. I'm going to be honest with you. I, they, I think they have something to do with the radio, but I'm not entirely sure. And then we have an uh, avionics switch here. And then moving down here to the center console, we've got uh, the battery switch. Propeller pitch levers, throttle levers, uh, mixture levers, the wobble pumps over here on the far right, and then moving down a little bit further, we've got the uh, gear lever, uh, carburetor heat lever, and uh, oil, oil shutter lever. And then we've got uh, rudder trim down here on the floor, and over here um, on the left side of the pilot's yoke, we've got aileron trim. And then moving up here to uh, the compass. And uh, on the ceiling, we've got your radio. And uh, that's pretty much it for uh, the instrument panel here, so we'll finally go ahead and get this thing started. All right, well, here we go. So uh, this is kind of a, a long process, but uh, starting out here, what we're gonna wanna do is, is at least move the engine private primer selector here, or the prime engine selector here, to the left engine. I want to come down here to the primer master valve and move this over to the right. Uh, we will want to engage the parking brake. Uh, you shouldn't roll in this thing um, when it starts up, but just out of habit. Then we'll come down here, hit the master ignition switch, and uh, turn the left and the right magnetos onto both. Go ahead and select both on the engine distributor dial, and then we'll select left on the tank selector, or it really any tank you want. Turn the battery on, flip the, mag the uh, avionics on, and then we'll come down here. We'll want to make sure that the mixture is up to rich, the propeller pitch is up to max, and we'll want to crack the throttle a little bit. I find that kind of lining the lever here up with the O on control is a uh, good place for it, and uh, move the friction lock just so it stops moving that's fine okay now uh, there are two ways to actually do this uh, one of them is is manually and then the other one is in here on the engine startup page so I'm gonna do it from the engine startup page I'll kind of give you a, a, a brief explanation of how to do it manually but if you're gonna do it manually you're gonna need to click on uh, get we're gonna need to put the ladder out and we're gonna need to attach the starter crank. So we'll need to click these two squares here. And then you'll need to move out to the left engine here. And to do that, you'll need to press control and six at the same time, and you'll come out here. So you have this little crank here. Uh, you'll need to click and hold this and, and let the flywheel spool up. And then once it's gotten to, let's say the proper RPM, come down here and you'll click on this to engage the clutch. Now I'm not gonna do this because every time I try and do this, it, it, it looks kind of like a, I don't know, Abbott and Costello routine. So, um, and I haven't had much success doing it that way. So I think I mentioned that if you want to go out to the, to the, left, the uh, right engine, you need to hit control seven, uh, same thing. So what we'll do here is we'll go ahead and get rid of the clipboard for a second and we'll need to prime the left engine. So we'll pull the primer here three or four times then we'll bring the clipboard back down and we'll hit uh, wind up flywheel. Now this plane is somewhat loud, so we'll see how loud this is when I start it. Wind up flywheel, it's pretty loud. 
so the flywheel will begin to wind up. So we'll want to go ahead and once the mesh flywheel turns green, we're going to want to hit the wobble pump here a couple times until you get up to about 5% or 5 PSI up here on your fuel, your, your fuel pressure. And then hit mesh flywheel. Now you can, as soon as, as soon as mesh flywheel turns green, you can pretty much hit it. You just need to make sure that you're up here at about 5 PSI when you do that. Alright, so we got the left engine started, so we'll go over here and we want to select the right engine now on the primer selector, and then we'll prime the right engine four times. Bring the clipboard back up. And wind up flywheel again. This one's going to take a little bit longer because I didn't already put the ladder and the crank in there. So, the ground crew guy will have to put those in place and then this will, the process will start. Alright, so we'll go ahead the wobble pump again. And there we go. We got engine 2 started. So we've got... Uh, got the Boeing started here. Um, go ahead and return these back to their default position. Now, uh, one thing I will say about this thing is uh, go ahead and move the friction locks down to make all this stuff hold still. Um, now, I tend to leave the, the oil shutters here closed uh, until a little bit after takeoff. Depending upon how short your taxi is or how long your taxi is, that may or may not be a good idea. So, uh, you know, keep that in mind. This thing does have damage on it. It is a pretty detailed damage model. Um, it will burn your engines up pretty quickly if you're not paying attention to them. If you leave the shutters closed, you'll probably get about 30 minutes of flight time, maybe 35 out of it before they actually do seize up. So, uh, you know, keep all that in mind. Uh, other than that, it's a uh, pretty easy plane to fly. Um, so I think... I think I'm forgetting something. Um, well, if I think of it, I'll mention it later in the video. So we'll uh, head out to the runway here and take it off. Alright, well, I did remember what I uh, forgot to mention in the last section, which is uh, don't let this thing go down to zero throttle. Like, don't don't ever do that. It, it will uh, kill the motors. So try and keep it somewhere around like 500, 600 RPM over here, and uh, it, it should be okay. Now the thing, one thing I did forget to mention, uh, at least on the clipboard here, is uh, you can actually cycle between uh, standard and metric here, just kind of by clicking anywhere on this uh, readout here, so if you don't want to deal with the metric system, then you can put everything into pounds. Now as far as how this thing taxis, uh, it does taxi pretty well. It can kind of get away from you. Uh, part of me thinks that the reason for that is because there's a bit of a lag behind your input to actually the response from the plane. So um, just kind of trust that it's going to do what you, you think you're telling it to do. And uh, don't get it going too fast. And, and you know, if, if you are having a little trouble turning, uh, just use the individual wheel brakes and uh, that should help out a little bit. So we'll... Uh, Go ahead here and take off. Um, go ahead and release the parking brake and begin to throttle it up. Uh, don't throttle it up too quickly. I, I tend to go up kind of gradually with it. Uh, it does take it a second to actually get rolling. But we'll go ahead and bring it up to 36 on your manifold pressure and uh, 2200 of your RPM. And uh, the tail should lift off the ground around about 45 miles an hour. I hope I can stay on the runway. Um, should begin pulling back on the stick around about, yo, uh, about 75 to 80 miles an hour, and it should lift off uh, around about 80, 85 miles an hour. Uh, now, sometimes it's, if, if the plane's really heavy, you know, weight seems to actually kind of come into play on this thing, a little, at least a little bit. So we'll uh, go ahead here and, and put the gear up. Now, the gear in this thing are a little strange. Um, it has an, uh, what seems to be a neutral position between up and down. And sometimes you have to hit the switch twice, and sometimes you don't. 
Uh, and when I say switch, I mean whatever whatever button you have mapped for uh, your gear. So uh, if it, if it, you hit it once and they uh, they don't go down or they don't come up, just hit it again, and uh, it should go ahead and retract them, or whatever you're doing. Um, now there is uh, a pretty what I'm going to say pretty detailed damage model for your engines in this thing. So um, once you've you've kind of gotten up here to whatever altitude you want, you want to bring this thing back down to about 29 your your uh, manifold pressure and reduce your propeller pitch down to about 2,000. So about 2,000 RPM. And uh, you should be okay. Now, I, I did uh, an hour and a half flight in this thing and left it at about, probably probably about 32 for the manifold pressure and uh, 2,100, maybe a little bit over 2,100 RPM. And it it seemed to last okay for that, that hour and a half flight. It did burn up quite a bit, quite a bit of oil. But other than that, it, it seemed to be okay. So there might be a, a little room to play with it. I'm not entirely sure yet. What, the one thing I will say is I did burn up both motors, and uh, this thing does actually glide pretty well. So um, if you manage to uh, break the motors, uh, to, you know, you probably land it somewhere, assuming you got somewhere to land, and uh, probably... I won't have too much trouble with it. It has an incredibly low stall speed, uh, something around like 45 miles an hour. It, it, it's actually pretty surprising, at least to me, at how slow this thing can actually fly. So um, it's a it's a pretty interesting one. I'll, I'll give it that. Now, as far as, as how it, it does fly, um, it's a little sluggish, which isn't a complaint or anything like that. I, I, I wouldn't expect this thing to be... Um, shoot my runway and have to come back. Uh, I wouldn't expect this thing to be uh, very nimble in the first place, um, but it, it is kind of sluggish. Uh, at least uh, pitch and roll are pretty sluggish. sluggish. Uh, the roll rate's not terrible, but uh, uh, assuming it'll do a roll, I haven't actually tried to get it to do a complete roll, but um, uh, the yaw, the yaw responsiveness though is actually pretty good. It's gonna, it's gonna really move you if you kind of kick the rudder. So, um, the the last thing I kind of will say about how it flies though is you are probably going to have to fly this thing. Uh, you're you're really not going to be able to leave it alone. Uh, I, I have a little bit of a a little bit of trouble actually getting this thing to kind of trim out and fly level. Um, on its own, it, it, it does take you kind of, of managing it most of the time while you're flying it. Um, you can you can kind of compensate a little bit with trim, but you're probably going to have to fly it. And then uh, the last thing is, is basically this thing is pretty loud. Um, when I have my headphones on, I have to turn the uh, volume down on this thing quite a bit. Uh, it, is, it is really loud, which is uh, not a complaint. I'm not complaining about its, its volume level, but uh, it is something to be aware of. Uh, it's sometimes rather difficult to actually hear any communications or anything like that. So, uh, you know, you might want to turn the engine volume down a little bit. I honestly can't imagine that this thing was all that quiet to be in in the first place, but uh, it is rather loud. So uh, now that I've gotten myself uh, horribly off course here, uh, when I get myself turned around and lined up with the runway, I'll, I'll come back to this and we'll bring it in for a landing. Alrighty, well, we'll go ahead and uh, come in here for a landing. Oh, this thing is pretty easy to land. Uh, that, that low stall speed kind of helps out with it. Um, it is really nice to do a wheeled landing on, and it is a, a, overall a pretty easy plane to land. So, um, now it, it does slow down pretty well, uh, both in the air and on the ground. So, uh, especially once you put the gear down, uh, they create a pretty good amount of drag on this plane. So you probably have to keep the throttle up somewhere around 55, maybe 60 percent, to kind of maintain about, let's say, 100 miles, to, uh, maybe 90 to 100 miles an hour. But we'll go ahead and put the gear down here. She will probably want to come in here around about maybe 120. But again, your your speed overall probably doesn't matter all that much in this one. Uh, it does slow down pretty quickly. So, I mean, as long as you're not doing, 
like 150 at the end of the runway, you should be fine. But we're doing about 120, maybe 125 right now. So we're slowing down here to about 100. A little bit more throttle here because uh, it's slowing down a little bit too much. I do find this thing to be a little interesting to land in crosswinds, but other than that, uh, that's, that's about the only thing I'd worry about with this one. Right, so we'll go ahead and reduce the throttle here a little bit, bring it down to around about 90 miles an hour. Uh, you, sh you should probably touch down about, about 80 miles an hour is probably pretty good. Maybe 85. But it, it does stop pretty quickly once it does get on the ground. And uh, I will say, and I'm not sure if this is my imagination or not, but it does seem like having different weight on this plane actually does affect its stopping distance. So, um, go ahead and apply the brakes and uh, the tailwheel kind of settle down here. And uh, that's pretty much it. So we'll go in here to the review, and uh, that'll be it for today. Alrighty, well, if you would like to pick up the Boeing 247, you can get it from Wing42's website or uh, the Microsoft Flight Simulator Marketplace. It's about $20, uh, which I gotta say, I think is great, given that there is quite a bit to this plane. So um, you seem to get quite a bit for your money. The texture and model quality are pretty good. Uh, it's got some points where I think the texture quality could maybe be a little bit better, but nothing that really detracts from the price. And given that it's only $20, uh, it does look really good. Uh, there is some nice visual wear and tear around the plane, carbon deposits, oil, that kind of thing. And the interior looks a little bit cleaner, but it, it still does look pretty worn. So I, I usually think those things are kind of nice touches to, to the sort of visual look of the plane and everything. The sound quality is quite good. Uh, it is pretty loud. I will say that. The sounds don't seem to be very generic uh, in terms of the switches and, and sort of the other things around the, the cockpit and everything. Um, everything does sort of sound somewhat unique. Um, the engine sound is, is really actually quite good. There's a, there's a nice amount of creaking and rattling that goes on with the plane while you're flying it around. Um, there does seem to be a missing sound effect when the tires actually touch down on the pavement, but uh, other than that, the, overall the sounds are really pretty good. Now the flight model is um, somewhat interesting. I like flying it, but sometimes it seems a little bit floaty and then sometimes it feels heavy. Uh, most of the time it's going to feel heavy though. I think some of that has to do with the sort of sluggishness of the responses to your inputs. Uh, it's not a complaint though. I, I will say that this is one plane that I noticed you know, gusts in and it, it does get bounced around pretty good. Um, I do know that I said this earlier, but uh, you, this is really one that you're not going to be able to take your hands off for too long. Uh, the, 45 to 50 mile an hour stall speed was really not something I was expecting with this one, especially after seeing how heavy it felt. Now, the stall is a little strange. It, it almost seems to do um, a tail slide, and, and sometimes it will. It'll drop the nose, or sometimes it'll drop the wing, but sometimes it does seem to do a tail slide. Uh, I'm not entirely sure what that's all about. Uh, again, it's not really a complaint. I mean, you're really going to have to be trying to stall this thing to actually get it to stall. It, it's a pretty easy thing to keep in the air. Uh, staying on course is uh, another matter though. But overall it's still pretty fun to fly. The engine damage in this plane I, I really did like and I did think it was actually one of the neater features of the plane. I like having to manage your engine you know, and temperatures and everything like that. Uh, and if you don't, you can always just turn damage off. Overall, I like the features. I mean, sometimes waiting on the ground crew can get a little annoying. But I, I kind of get what they were going for with it and it is kind of neat. The radio navigation is something I haven't mentioned yet. I haven't really spent too much time using it, and though I understand it well enough to navigate, I didn't think I understood it well enough to uh, put it in a tutorial. So overall, I do like the 247. Uh, it's not normally something I would pick up, uh, but I was looking around and thought I'll, I'll check it out, and I, I have been enjoying it. Um, the price is not that expensive, and you seem to get a lot with it, so I, I don't know if there's something horribly wrong with it that I haven't found yet. Uh, either way, I have been having fun with it.
But uh, that's that's pretty much going to be it for today, y'all. So thanks for watching, and I hope there's a next time.